Zebras are usually around at 4.10 to 5.25 p2. And guess what guys? Even though you think human are tall, but they're even taller. Hi guys, I'm Raya. Welcome back to another episode of Kids Black History. Today guys, we are going to be looking at an animal called the and if you guess zebras then you are correct if you like zebras and if they're like one of your favorite and if you think they're so cool something like that why don't you go like sus like subscribe if you haven't subscribed and smash that thumbs up. Zebras roam the treeless plains across countries like Democratic Republic of Congo, Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Angola. Zebras are herbivores, guys. I bet you learned it in like year two, because I did. This mainly means that they eat plants and not eat meat. They spend most of the day eating grass. And sometimes leaves drop to examine Zebras are usually around at 410 to 525 p2. And guess what guys? Even though you think human are tall, but they're even taller. Zebras can weigh between 776 to 992 pounds. Wow. That is like a thousand people weighing on one. That is crazy. Zebras usually live up to 25 years. Our planet is known for three different species of zebras. The plain zebra, gray zebra, and mountain zebra. Is it shaped like a mountain? I'm only joking. <laughs> All kinds of free zebras live in Africa, guys. So, if you want to see some zebras, then why don't you go visit Africa. Scientists are unsure why zebras have stripes. Wait, kind because it kind of probably sounds like a zip because zebra zip kind of maybe. I don't know. Some people think it's to confuse predators but I think it's to like blend in with like stripes on the floor. And some people think it's to help tell zebras apart. Zebras have great hearing and vision allow them to sense predators early. They also have great taste and can suspect changes in their food. The most common species is the plain zebra <laughs> who roam the grassland and woodland of Eastern and Southern Africa. Zebras are normally on the move for fresh grass to eat. And water to drink, probably from like a water fountain because zebras don't have water bottles, uh, or animals don't even have water bottles, so they'll probably go find some fountain and <laughs> lick it. Zebras live in large herds and will migrate together, trying for miles and miles for fresh food and water. Zebras can be sometimes aggressive animals guys uh -oh. so when you go to africa do not pet like aggressive animals like when like if you have seen the video um dangerous hippos never go near a hippo because they can kill 500 people at a time i remember that guys never go near like dangerous animals that's why i do these videos so that you know which animals you should never go near and which animals you can do Zebran stallions fight for females with pins and bites. <laughs> a powerful kick that can really hurt other zebras. Well, wow, guys, that's why you should never ever go near a zebra because they can do powerful kicks on you. Every zebra has their own unique pattern of stripes. Just like you have your own unique fingerprint. Like, my fingerprint is not like my mom's or anyone's else, so we all have a different fingerprint. As a 
said grazes. It uses a sharp front teeth to bite the grass. And then uses a duller back teeth to crush and grind. The zebra's teeth keep growing for the entire life. They keep growing and growing and growing because the constant grazing and chewing wears down. Zebras groom one another, guys. If you see two zebras standing close to each other and it looks like they're biting each other, don't worry, they'll sort it out there somewhere. And you don't have to improvise because if you do, then they might bite you hard. They're actually pulling loose hairs off each other as they groom. It feels good for a zebra, too, guys. It's like when you're itching and you get scratched. Well guys, that was an amazing video on zebras. Guys, all the African people created all the hairstyles today. I love my curly big hair. You love your curly hair? Yeah, it looks so fat. <laughs> Look at that beautiful lace. Look at those colors. You can't get that in the shops, can you, Raya? Wow. Guys, do you have a beautiful dress from Africa and Nigeria? Maybe a different country from Africa? Guys, today we're going to be learning about African hair. That's right, we're looking at beautiful African hair. What can you tell us about your beautiful hair, Raya? Oh, my hair is afro see at the bun and it's so pretty. And we got lines over here. What, your edges? Yeah, you got your edges. And we got curly with my beads. Beautiful beads. I love my curly big hair. You love your curly hair? Yeah, it looks so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Afro hair is really, really big, isn't it? It can grow really, really wide. Yeah. What's so special about your hair? What trick can your hair do? Let me show you. So when you put it grows very long, and my hair is so long, so it goes long, and then when you let go of it, it goes back to smoking. <laughs> Like a bouncy. That's right. Afro hair does that, doesn't it? Yeah. Curly hair. Raya, what's that at the front of your hair, though? It's cane rows. You got some cane rows at the front of your hair? Yeah. And what else is that? I got some beads. Beautiful beads. <laughs> this hairstyle that you have is so beautiful, but do you know where the original hairstyles come from that look like yours. Guys, all the African people created all the hairstyles today. That's right, Raya. All the hairstyles that you see today were created by African people yeah. many, many years ago. Yeah! Raya, we could go all the way back to ancient Egypt thousands of years ago. All the Egyptians created hairstyles like this. Look at all these beautiful dreadlocks and braids! That's right, Raya. Egyptians who had high importance wore their styles like this. Raya, there were even mummies that were found in ancient Egypt with their dreads still intact. Can you believe it? Oh my god, guys, I can't believe it. That was a good one. Guys, in West Africa, your hair shows your pride, your style, even your status. Yes, Freya, that's right. Braid 
showed your age, your religion, your wealth, and even your ranking in some West African communities. Hi, my hair's feeling funny. What do you mean, Ray? What's going on with your hair? Oh my goodness, what's, what's going on guys? Something is happening to Ray's hair. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Look at your hair, Raya. Guys, look at my beautiful hair. It is beautiful. Let's have a closer look. Wow, look at this beautiful hair. It looks gorgeous. Wow. Amazing. This gorgeous hairstyle. Wow, look at it from the back. Absolutely gorgeous. Guys, this hairstyle is called Bantu Nuts. Or sometimes you might know them as China Bumps. Raya, so who created the Bantu Knots? Guys, they're from Zulu tribes in Southern Africa. We can also call them Zulu Knots. Zulu knots. <laughs> yeah. Guys, Bantu means people. Yes, it does. Guys, let's look at some more Bantu knots. That's right. Here are some examples of some of the lovely people in Southern Africa wearing some of these beautiful styles of Bantu knots. How lovely are these, Raya? Yeah, look how pretty they're doing. Let's see some in the globes to see where the zoo people are. Good idea, Raya. Let's have a look. Oh, there's the globe. So let's have a look on this globe and see if we can find where in Southern Africa people wear their hair like yours in these yeah, Bantu knots. Want to give it a spin? See where Lam by the Zoom people right there. That's right, in the southern part of Africa. That's highlighted on the globe. Guys, the Zoom people come from Zimbabwe and Malawi and Mozambique and Botswana and Les Teeny. So do you wear your hair in different hairstyles? You should brush your beautiful hair. You should wear your hair with so much pride. Your hair and your clothes are so beautiful. My afro hair is magic. Boys and girls, your hair is a crown. That is right, Raya. Should anybody be touching your crown, your beautiful hair? Mm. No, when you go on the street, you don't let anybody touch that crown and those beautiful curls and those beautiful hairstyles, but you wear them with pride, okay? Yeah. If anyone touch my hair, I just say, do not touch my hair. That's right. Remember all these hairstyles originate from Africa. Just like the examples we saw today. Yeah! Look at me! Engineer, Raya. Right guys, an aerospace engineer. 
engineer are people who check designs to meet engineering principles. There are many design aircraft, spacecraft, satellites and missiles. They also make prototypes of their designs to see if they work. Which aerospace engineer and mathematician are we studying today, Rhea? Today, guys, we're going to learn about famous aerospace engineer, Mary Jackson. But first, guys, I need you to do one little thing right now. Make sure you smash the thumbs up and subscribe the button down below. Dorothy 
Ivory Vaughan later inspired the book and film called Hidden Figures. You can watch or read it. Like Hidden Figures. She received a Congressional Medal, which was gold in 2019, to honour her legacy. And recently, in 2021, the headquarters of NASA was renamed Mary W. Jackson NASA Headquarters. It is important to remember how key Mary Jackson's data was for the NASA and space program. Without her dedication, national talent and hard work, many of their missions would not be the same. Think about how important one person can be. Mary Jackson, Katherine Johnson and Dorothy Vaughan loved to maths and engineering help us get to space. What could you do if you put your mind to it, guys? I think I would go to space and explore. You could be an aerospace engineer too. Guys, if you want to learn more about the West computers, check out our videos with Katherine Johnson and the reward. Guys, you know what celebration I'm talking about? That's right, guys, Kwanzaa! Today we're learning all about Kwanzaa and exactly how it's Just a random name, guys. You know, random is not like really random. 
It comes from the sun. Guess? Swahili! Friends! We're telling the wet kinds of. That means the first fruit of the harvest, guys. I wonder how harvest links to the Kwanzaa celebration. Well, Raya, in places all over Africa, the harvest is important. It's a time when many people give thanks for the new crops that are grown. Ooh, I see, guys! Let's mention the celebrations! Kwanzaa is celebrated with seven key principles. Ngozo Saba, each of the seven days of Kwanzaa, represents each of the seven principles. Let's go through these principles! Umoja, which means unity. Second principle, Kajigakalia, which means self-determination. Third principle, Ujima, which means collective work and responsibility. Fourth principle, Ujama, which means cooperative economic. Fifth principle, Nia, which means sense of purpose. Which means creativity. And the seventh principle, Imani, which means faith in people and our hearts. Guys, there's lots of different ways to decorate Kwanzaa. Just like people decorate for Christmas or other festivals. For Kwanzaa decorations, you will use the colours red, black, and green. They're Kwanzaa colours. Just like kids like history look away too. We just said red. Well, so these are Christmas colours, red and green, but if you have black, it's a Kwanzaa colour too. There are also seven symbols, just like the seven principles, when celebrating Kwanzaa, 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 Kwanzaa. The seven symbols are Mazeo, which sell crops and remind people about harvest. Umkika, which is a placement for the crops. It represents the symbol foundation. Mahindu. Ear of the corn, which represents activity and family. Mashuma Saba. The seven candles. One is black to represent the people. Three red candles represent the blood. And three green candles represent the earth. Kinara, the candle holder, represents the ancestors. Komnecha, Omocha, the unity cup for family to drink together. <coughs> and the money, which are gifts that are covered to Jesus and growth. Guys, there you have it. You just learned all about Kwanzaa and the celebrations. Look, 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 look. I want to wish all those celebrating a happy Kwanzaa. So make sure you smash the thumbs up always 
and just get the button down below. Always just get the button down below, down below. Part 
part of the Site of Space Shuttle Program. That was the first reusable space car. After lots of very important hard work, Captain Johnson retired from NASA in 1986. Since working at NASA, Captain Johnson has received so many honours and rewards. In 2015, she was given the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is the highest civilian honour. There's even a building that's called Captain Johnson. Wait, 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 wait. Does Captain Johnson work there? Maybe she actually works there, like the White House. Remember that video? Kamala Harris, she actually works there. That's her office. Go and check that video out so, so you remember what this video is like when you know what this video is like. Or comment down below if you know what, if you know if she um works here or she doesn't. Well, Raya, she used to work at NASA, didn't she? But now she's retired, which means she doesn't work there anymore. But NASA named the building Katherine Johnson after her. That's amazing, guys. But wait, wait, wait. Does she, does she not work there anymore? That's right, she doesn't work there anymore. What? What? That means she can't even work in her own name. This building was named in 2016. This same year, a book and a film was released about Captain Johnson. Wait, wait, guys. I need to buy it right now so I can learn about her in the book. Also in the book is Dorothy Warren and Mary Jackson. Mary, that's all her Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. <laughs> the book is called Hidden Figures, The American Dream and the Untold Story of Black Women, Mathematician Who Helped Win the Space Race. The movie is called Hidden Figures. It is important to remember, guys, that NASA needed Captain Johnson for her amazing work for mathematics. The success of missions that Captain Johnson contributed would not have been the same without her dedication, talent and hard work. Guys, think about what important work you could do. I think I can be better at math. Think about how I can make a difference. Because remember Betsy Cole in that video? She loved maths and reading, didn't she? Remember? And um, if you want to see that bit, you can just watch that little bit when she says she likes maths and reading. I like reading too. Guys, maybe you can be a mathematician just like Kappa Johnson. Have you ever seen a pink lake before? I have never, ever seen a pink leg. Located by an hour away from the car, the capital city of Senegal. And the special thing is, guys, that the lake is pink! A pink lake! Can you believe it, guys? But before we get into this video, guys, I need you to do one little thing right now. Make sure you smash the thumbs up and subscribe the button down below in five, four, three, two, one. Subscribe. <laughs> Welcome to the KDA family. 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 Welcome to the KDA. Let's start talking 
talking about this lake that is pink like a pink i still can't believe it's pink guys i mean how can a sea be pink that's a good question raya why is it pink since the link is only separated by some shallow dunes from the Atlantic Ocean, it has a lot of salt in it. This high level of salt attracts a kind of bacteria called Donaliella salina bacteria. It releases a red pigment so that it can absorb sunlight which gives the lake its pink colour. Its colour is more vibrant in the dry season which lasts from November to June and less so in the rainy season which lasts from July to October. It can even change colour due to the time of day and the intensity of the sun or the amount of salt. goes from a light purple to a deep scarlet pink and if the salt is in the lake at 40% it can even be a deep red colour like this deep now let's look at some fun facts about rat bar later rat bar is called black rose by the locals which means pink lake not many creatures are able to live in Lake Retzba because of its high salt content. So it serves mainly as a tourist point and for salt production. If you decide to visit Lake Retzba, you will see lots of salt collectors working on the lake and the shores of Lake Retzba are full of piles of collected salt. This salt is extracted by locals from the bottom of the lake using their hands the lake is only 3 square kilometres big, about 1.1 square miles. Lake Repta is not only the pink lake in the whole entire world. There are other lakes near Baku, Azerbaijan or in Jeddah, South Arabia. But they are either small or not natural. The people who extract salt from the lake cover themselves in shea butter to protect themselves from harsh sunlight. Guys, we use shea butter to cream ourselves, don't we? And it's also good for hair, isn't it? And it keeps hair very, 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 very healthy. So wait, does that mean they wear that shea butter on their soul and the bees to protect them from the hot sun? So what? The lake was the finish point of the well-known Dakar Rally before it moved to South America. Wait, all the way to Africa, to South America? That's a bit far. The Donalina Salina bacteria, which makes the lake pink, is completely harmless to humans. And swimming in the lake is possible and the water is actually fit for human drinking. Guys, did you know that you can drink it? Wait, guys, this is confusing. You might be confused there. That has salt in it and you can drink it. You must be confused, aren't you? But maybe in another video, we can tell you how it is made. The sand on the shores of the lake is actually salt which is extracted from around the lake. The salt concentration on the lake is 1.5 times higher than that of the Dead Sea. Lake Repta was originally a fresh water lake until the 1980s when the drought caused the change in composition of the water which became too salty guys. Wow guys what an amazing lesson of the pink lake. Have you enjoyed this video? I have a lot about this pink lake. I thought it was actually blue. You know, there's a sea called the Red Sea and I thought it was actually red, but it's blue because it was called the Red Sea. But this one is not called just the pink sea. It's actually pink.
pink. I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, kids, love Guys, you may not know this, but black people contributed to so many inventions. contributed to so many inventions. That means they created something new or discovered something for the first time. Today guys, we're going through a list of some amazing inventions from black men and women. That's right Raya, by the end of this video, you will be amazed by the contributions of black people to society with these inventions. Some inventions are everyday items that we use all the time. Okay guys, let's get started with our first brilliant invention, the fountain pen. The fountain pen was redesigned and patented by William P. Purvis in 1890. William Purvis also invented other things. The fountain pen is great for writing very neatly in your books. Lots of people like to use fountain pens at school to write with. The clothes dryer. This was patented by George T. Sampton in 1971. Now this is now known as a tumble dryer. This adventure is great guys, because instead of waiting ages and ages for our clothes to dry, we could just chop them into a jumbo dryer. The elevator. This was patented by Alexander Miles in 1867. In the UK we call it a lift. He allowed the elevator to open and close the doors by itself. How great is that guy? We haven't got time to close the doors manually. The guitar. This was invented by Robert F. Levin Jr. in 1886. He called the guitar the euphonica. It produced a louder sound than a traditional guitar. How cool is that guys? I don't have a guitar. I do have a ukulele. Which is another string instrument. The hairbrush. This was designed by Little Newman in 1898. Little Newman. Could be taken apart or cleaned. Thank goodness for little Newman, or we might all have messy hair. The doorknob. This was first invented by Osborne Dorsey in 1878. Before doorknobs and handles, people just used locks. So this invention was very much needed. We have doorknobs on every door all across the world now. Can't imagine opening the door with no doorknobs, guys. This amazing inventor, Osborne Dorsey, also invented the doorstop. This was his most famous invention. A doorstop is placed at the door to keep it open. Again, this was used every day all over the world. The light bulb, patterned by Louis Latimer. In 1882, this was an improvement on Thomas Edison's bulb. Lewis Latimer made sure to add a carbon filament in his bulb, which kept the bulb working for much longer. The curtain rod or the curtain pole. This great invention was designed by Samuel Scotton in 1892. How would we hang our curtains? Without a curtain rod! Just as well, Samuel Squatton had this brilliant idea! The traffic light! This important invention was patented by Garrett Morgan in 1923. He introduced the freeway signal for safety. This version of traffic light 
keeps people safe and news all over the world today. The digital cell phone or mobile phone. In 1998, a man named Jesse Russell invented the concept for a wireless digital phone. He's an expert in wireless communication. This is such a significant invention for society today. We can't even survive without our phones these days. Can you imagine if we didn't have them? Right, lads. That's enough inventors for today. But don't worry, we still have lots more black inventors. Look at a Victor video. Remember, guys, when you wash your hair or turn on the light, or even pick up the phone. Think about the amazing craft and hard work of our talented black inventors. Surprise your family, friends, uncles, aunties, cousins, or whoever you want about all the black inventors you know. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Whoa, all these amazing drums created in Africa. I love drums because those instruments are so nice. Because when you bang them, they're so fun. You gotta dun 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 dun. Fruits with hard shells like calabash. 
all these type of drums will produce waves of different sounds when you bang them. Guys, you can produce sounds with your hands, drumsticks like this. Or rubber mallets. Let's go through some different examples of drums that can be felt in Africa, guys. Conga drums. This can be felt in Zimbabwe. Conga drum is true. When you use a wide conga drum, you get to very bassy sound. Yeah, 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 slip drums. These drums originate from Central African Republic in the 19th century. This drum vibrates when it's shaken or hit. Two-headed drum. These drums can come in different shapes. They have two closed ends. You can hit either side of the two-headed drum. The jambe, 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 jambe drum. This drum might just be the most well-known African drum. And here's the jambe drum, guys. It's made from African hardwood. And listen to this, guys. The top of the drum is made with animal skin. It doesn't feel like animal skin. The djembe drum has a big, big, big history in West Africa. It was created by the Mali Empire many years ago, guys. It believed that Splatsmith created the first djembe drum. They were called beautiful creations around the drum and making you need for each drummer. Some drums even look like sculptures. Take a look at the design on this djembe drum, guys. See? It looks really pretty. I like the top of the drum. And it looks really nice. Oh, and it feels soft. And I like the bits, like the yellow bits and the black and white bits. I like the whole drum. And see these? Designs. I like this design too because it's really pretty. It has some pretty dots, really pretty dots. And when I turn it around, it's really pretty. Here's some more jambe drums, guys. People from the jelly class, the musicians, are the ones to play the jambe. Look at my new jambe drum, guys. If you're a drum, get involved. If you don't have one, just make your own drum!
Bye, guys.